Holy That's a great big one, dude. Get that net. Dude, hit that power pull button for me. It's right at the dash. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, that's like the shortest, stubbiest freaking five and a half. Dude, how about it? What is going on, my homies? It's, it, dude, it's hot as balls down here. We are in Florida, gonna hang out with JT for a little bit, hoping to bring you some, some Mondo videos and have a good old time down here. But what I wanna talk to you about today is something I've been obsessed with, like absolutely obsessed with, and that's this new hover hook. I have been catching them, dude, and especially fish that don't seem to respond to like anything else. It's my buddy Bo called it perfectly. It's like it's bro, you're you're live bait fishing, and it kind of is the way the way the bait sets up in the water column, the natural movement, the light line, like everything about it is finesse and super hyper natural. But what we're gonna do today is I had a lot of guys ask me about how to rig it, as well as what specific baits and styles of baits to use, because it's not exactly it's not intuitive once you get it you get it but right off the bat it's not exactly intuitive so we're gonna go through that and I'm gonna tell you a couple different ways to fish it the, the reality is though with this thing is there is no ceiling there there is no limit on how you can fish it there's some conditions that limit how to fish it because it is a lighter finesse presentation but what you put on it how you kind of slang it out there what you doodle it with this is like light noodle dicking you know but however you doodle it there is no ceiling but I'm gonna tell you what has been kind of working for me and what's been successful Successful and what's caught me some some tournament fish that have put me in two top fives in the past two months so hit that like and subscribe button hover hook light noodle dicking so let me show you how to rig this thing because like I said it's counterintuitive it doesn't make a whole ton of sense once you get it it does but this hover hook you can see it's a 90 degree hook um, this is I think the 332 nd so you have an internal weight you have a little kind of nipple on there kind of weird because you don't put it through the nose of the bait. You actually run it along what I would call like the spine or the back of the bait. So let me show you how you rig this up. I'm gonna show you a little mod. This is one of the baits I'm gonna tell you about to, to put on the back. But one thing you can do with this is I like this thing to fall a little bit faster. It doesn't fall super fast. And what I do is this is the new Gambler Minnow, um, the four inch. It's got that paddle tail, which is great if you want the thing to fall like super duper duper slow. But I'm fishing like 10 to 15, 15 to 18. That's, that's too slow. So what I do is I literally take and I cut a V out of that tail so there's two little danglers right there and all you do is kind of just follow there's some little um, there's some little indentations on there right there and then once I make those cuts I pull it and I get a little split tail kind of like that what I usually do is line up the hook just like that that's what we want our end product to look like but with the weight inside the bait so that's about a, I'd say a quarter inch down so you find that same place in the center of the minnow or the center of the bait that you're using just like that and you stick that hook in there super simple right now the real trick is i don't know if you guys can see how deep that hook is but it's maybe an eighth of an inch between an eighth and a quarter inch deep you never want the hook to go deeper into the bait than that this is almost like a skin hooking technique so I'm going to thread it by just pushing the bait up and I hope you can see that with all the sun like the hook is not that deep I'm just following sort of the back of the bait and staying within that eighth of an inch depth or like approximately from here this is the real artful kind of deal the, the trick is to grab the hook with your two fingers like that and then place your pointer finger on the top of that 90 and what you're going to do is a pull and press. So I'm going to be pulling with these fingers and pressing with these fingers. The reason you want to do that is because baits are expensive and you don't want to wreck a bunch of baits. If you do one or the other, you tend to, to misthread the hook through the rest of the way and you also tend to tear up baits. So you want to use kind of just a pressure technique. Sign up a balance of pushing and um, pulling that thing through and then you'll see that little nipple is just barely sticking out this is sort of kind of the funky part all you do is you're gonna lift the tip of the bait right over that nipple and use that that point and that actually keeps the bait in place and what you end up with is a beautiful hover rig 
pretty cool, right? It makes a lot of sense once you get it down, but at first we're so used to hooking through things through the nose, like a Texas rig or putting a, a lead head on a, on, a, on a little swim bait or something through the nose. It doesn't exactly make sense to run along the spine, but just big tricks, you know, about a quarter inch back on whatever bait you're using, never go deeper than that eighth of an inch or so, otherwise it's not gonna come out right. And then using that, that push and pull pressure technique to work the hook the rest of the way through. I have three main baits that I absolutely love on this thing, and they all kind of have their own like qualities, their own benefits. So the first one, which we just talked about, this is the new Gambler um, FFS Minnow, so forward facing series Minnow. Uh, what's cool about this and what kind of sets it apart from the rest is it's a special custom plastic blend that shows up better on forward facing sonar, like Active Target, Live Scope, whatever you got. Um, so that's a benefit right there. As you saw, it's really easy to rig up because it has that, that nice flat back to it. It's a thinner style bait. Another kind of cool tweak is you can mod it. Um, 90% of the time I'm cutting the tail out like the mod that I showed you, but if you want an ultra slow fall, you can go ahead and leave that tail as a flapper. Doesn't cast totally awesome, but none of these baits really, except for one, really cast halfway decent because it is such a light rig. Um, that, that hover hook is anywhere from a 16th to 332nd, and I think there's an eighth ounce, but with the eighth ounce, you need to use a bit bigger weight, a bigger bait because there's a bigger weight to accommodate. My second pick, and uh, I think this is still like a top 10 seller on Tackle Warehouse. Um, there, there's two of them, but it's basically the same bait, and that would be the Spunk Shad. Um, shad style bait, got this awesome tail on it. Um, the hook, let me grab a hover hook here. The hook fits in it really well. This casts a little bit better because there's a little more plastic. It's a very short finesse bait. You can see it pops in just like that. You can see what that tail does though. The one thing that, that I'm not a huge fan of when it comes to the Spunk Shed is the darting motion is not as good. And I think that has to do with the, the more blunt or rounded nose and also the girth of the body. I will do this in the 3.5 inch size. And then if I'm looking for something a little bit bigger or I want to slow down the fall, I will go to the 4.5 size. So you can kind of see the difference it's just a little bit bulkier like if you got bluegill use something semi-dark if you got like shad and minnows and stuff use something like albino alewife you know um white even depending on your watercolor so my favorite bait for this and this is this is so funny because this is like my chatterbait deal you know we make all these chatterbait trailers there's all these cool different variations you can do and i still think one of the best chatterbait trailers is a fluke hands down dude like it's it's og it works it does exactly kind of like that that shimmy that you want and in this case this is also one of my favorite um the one of my favorite hover rig baits so it's a little bulkier um this is the super stud now i like a lot of these look the same right a fluke is a fluke is a fluke um the super stud from gambler is a little bit softer plastic with this being a finesse presentation I like that. You know, if you want to throw a zoom fluke on there, do whatever you want. But the softer plastic um, that you can find for your, your baits for this hover rig, the better off you're going to be because it is a very subtle, nuanced gliding presentation. So any kind of little, little nudged, like little shake that it can do because that plastic is super subtle, supple is excellent. The reason I really like a fluke is it's a little bit harder to rig with the hover rig because it does have this open sort of area. So it's not a full body bait. Um, so you have to be very careful as you run along that back spine of the bait. However, it's a bulkier bait. There's more plastic on it. It makes it a lot easier to cast and sort of make those short sort of lined up casts when you're trying to pick fish off. It has an amazing darting action. This retrieve that I do, I will actually fish it kind of like a hair jig or, or like fast reel it. And when I do that with the fluke, it's absolutely sick. The thing does this and then it kind of like spins down because I've watched it do it on the active target and I've watched it do it next to the boat. It, it's got a cool action to it and it's the most castable. So this is probably one of my favorite ones and it's, it's super accessible you know a bunch of people make them you can get whatever so retrieves wise <laughs> this, this is where it gets kind of funky number one i'm going to tell you this if you throw this thing out there in deep water you are going to be waiting like 60 seconds to sink this thing down it's absolutely obnoxious uh it takes a while if you're fishing 10 12 if your feet if fish are down in like 20 feet of water you're going to be sitting there so one thing to take into like into consideration is conditions this bait fishes best for the angler i'm not saying you can't catch them on it but if you have flat 
to very semi chop conditions. If you have a lot of wind, you're gonna have a hell of a time controlling this bait, seeing it on forward facing sonar and presenting it. It gets extremely difficult. So it's, it's a condition oriented type of presentation. Uh, the way I like to fish it, the, the main way and the way I learned how to do it way back when we were testing the prototypes on this is literally I would see groups of suspended fish maybe in like four or five or I'd see like four or five fish aligned along the bottom. I would throw this bait slightly past them, two or three foot sink it down trying to keep my forward facing my active target two locked on there and then when i got about two foot a foot and a half above them i would basically put some tension on the line you don't want to reel real quick because it'll actually jump the bait up like two or three foot and then all of a sudden you're out of that that target zone that juice zone and and basically put some tension on the line once i established kind of got that slack out of the line and got that that bow out of the line and got the bait hovering which is what happens when you just put tension on the line it's sort of it ever so slightly falls like a tight line deal, but it basically hovers. Um, at that point, I would do very slight ro like rod tip twitches. Now here's the deal guys, be subtle. This bait will jump up two or three foot with, with pops. Like if you pop this thing, it's gonna freaking jump up into the sky. What you wanna do is be very, very subtle and almost shake like a semi-taut bow and just with your rod tip, like not at all. Like just a very slight shake. Otherwise, you're gonna have that bait jump out of the strike zone. Um, you just want it enough so it kind of teases them and keeps the bait in place. That's one presentation. The other thing too is when you're throwing to these groups of fish, if you do that and the fish don't move up to it or take some kind of like reactive action, move on because this is a numbers game. You're throwing, 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 throwing. It's a lot like flipping, a lot like pitching and flipping to these fish. Like if they don't go within the first like minute or so, half minute, like move on, dude, you're wasting your time. So the other retreat that I'll do, and this one's been more at play as we get later on summer and these fish get super pressured. They've seen a million baits, it gets hot. You know, I think the water temp down here was like 87 and we're catching them on it, but less is more. Um, that's really the key with a lot of these like finesse techniques. You will throw it out there, you will sink it down, and then put that tension on the line, and that's when your job stops. So you put that tension on the line, and basically you're, for lack of a better word, tight lining it. Um, you're letting that bait pendulum ever so slowly. That's why it's so integral to, to really have your forward-facing sonar dialed in, as well as um, your your cast location. If you don't make a good cast, don't waste all this time letting it sink down there. Like make the good cast, sink it down there, and then just hold it. You want to keep it two to three feet from the fish, depending on water clarity. But two to three foot is a good. Um, a good estimate um, and then you're just going to put tension on it and keep that bait there and see how the fish react if they come to it if they start kind of moving up towards it if they move away from it um, what i've found is that that do nothing retrieve i don't know if they're used to like that human interaction with the bait where you're shaking 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 trying to get them react or what it is and they want something ultra natural or if they're they're just spooky i i, I don't know but that that dead sort of do nothing retrieve has been the hottest when the water temp's been hot for highly pressured fish. Now, weird retrieves. So what I learned early season this year is I was actually catching a lot of fish on a Nico rig, um, but not in a traditional way. I'd throw it out there, get it down to the bottom, sort of slow drag it, and I'd get around a group of fish and I could literally see them around my, my bait and they, they were not interested. They would follow it or they'd be around it, but they would not close the deal. So I started doing this fast, like two or three retrieves, which would basically jet the, the Nico rig way above those fish, five to eight, five to 10 foot up, almost like a hair jig. And uh, on the fall or on the jet up, I would get them to react to it and they would eat it. And I caught some bigs, caught a couple fives, caught like I think two four pound spots doing it. Um, so it definitely worked. I basically implemented that with this hover rig. The only problem is the Nico rig gets down a lot faster than this hover rig. So what I will do is this, I will see fish on the bottom, see them suspended. We'll make that cast past them just like we talked about. But instead of stopping the bait above them, I'm gonna let it fall through them. So you have two chances to catch this fish. One, as the bait falls through them, they follow it and go down to the bottom and then they eat it off the bottom. Or two, once that bait actually gets to the bottom, give it a second because even though your forward facing sonar is real time it's not like every second real time so you got to give it just a pause let it settle down to the bottom and then do two one and a half to two just power like retrieves on your spinning rod and then kill it 
and keep a slight tension on, on just like a hair jig, keep a slight tension on the bait. Um, what's either gonna happen is you're gonna see a bunch of fish that you didn't even see jet off the bottom and jet up to the bait, or you're gonna get some chasers just from around that all of a sudden are gonna come onto your screen. So keep it up at that point, semi-tension, and then let it slowly fall just by lowering your rod tip. Um, so your bite's gonna come at that top point or it's gonna come as it falls. Do this two or three times, especially if you know there's fish around. Um, if you can get them to react, what ends up happening, it's just like firing up a school. If there's four or five of them, you can go back and catch four or five doing this retreat. They'll all be kind of in a group. They, they'll get fired up, you catch the one, they might even follow you to the boat and then you pitch to them at the boat. Um, it, it's the one reactive technique that I figured out with this. It'll absolutely drive you nuts, like sinking the bait down that far, but it kills it. Like I've, I've caught some bigs on fish that I literally cannot get to bite anything. I can get them to follow a glide bait. I can get them to follow a worm, but they will not eat the bait. So that's what's been kind of blowing my mind about, about this hover rig is its ability to sort of be live bait like we talked about. It is the most live bait presentation that I've ever seen the way it twitches and moves. But uh, that's a wrap, guys. I'll put links to all this stuff um, that we talked about down in the description box at Tackle Warehouse so you can get, go check it out. Try a hover rig. It's a blast. Even if you don't got forward-facing sonar, if you got any kind of vertical structure um, that you can throw this thing along, give it a try. It's super finesse. It's super cool. It catches everything, too. I've caught giant catfish on it, dude. Caught bass, especially spotted bass. Love it. It's a cool presentation. You're fishing on light line, braid to eight pound test on like a seven one, seven foot medium to medium light rod. It, it's a great fight and it's, I, I don't know, I dig this kind of stuff. It's very technical fishing. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. We will see you hopefully getting sweaty but catching some giant bass down here in Florida or just talking fishing. Later boys.